Hello, this is Charles Konefke, Wattstopper's Vice President for Systems. After much hard work and effort, I'm very pleased to be able to introduce the brand new updated interface we've created for our DLM Segment Manager. Internally, we call the Segment Manager with the new interface Segman version 2.1. Most of you know the Segment Manager by its catalog numbers, the LMSM 3E or LMSM 6E. The Segment Manager typically connects to one or more DLM segment wires, which is the room-to-room -room BACnet MSTP network that connects individual DLM rooms and LMCP relay panels together. We've been selling Segment Managers for several years now and wanted to update our interface to be able to bring more information about what was going on inside a building space to the people charged with running and maintaining the building. The Segment Manager now has two modes or sets of screens. The screens that previously users had familiarity with have been grouped together on the configure side as opposed to what you're seeing here on the dashboard side. Before we get to the more dynamic aspects of the interface on the dashboard side, let's take a look at what we've done with the configure screens. You get to the configure screens by clicking the configure button in the upper right hand portion of the screen. Folks who've already worked with one of our segment managers will be familiar with many of the options under our Configure tab. Previously, they were all under a wrench icon, but we decided to give the tabs names since we thought that this would be more helpful to casual users of the system. Someone setting up a segment manager for the first time, typically one of our technicians, would use the Device Discovery option. They would start by going to the Start, Stop, and Discovery slider and then select all the networks connected to the segment that they'd want to check for our LMBC 300 network bridges. They would then select the Discover button, and finally they would click on the Start button. Once the discovery is started, the segment manager will reach out across the specified MSTP segment networks and start communicating with all the network bridges in each individual room and any LMCP relay panel. The bridges will provide the segment manager with information detailing every individual DLM device in that space, as well as key settings in those devices. The segment manager will then use that information to connect, create several views of the network and devices under the Devices tab. Let's click on that tab now. When you go to the Devices tab for the first time, you can bring up the DLM devices based on several different views, including devices by location, by network, or by name. We'll select the by name view. For this segment manager, all the name fields have been filled in with the office number and employee's name, and so they're all arranged based on that text info. In a new installation, instead of seeing names of all the rooms like you see here, you'd see the device tree with all network bridges arranged based on their serial numbers. In that case, somebody would have to go through and using a cross-reference that hopefully would have been prepared by the contractor or the startup technician they would click on every individual bridge in a room and type that room's name and number as well as any other key information so here this particular room has been labeled 101 lobby and given a location of core if i expand the info by clicking the plus symbol next to the bridge you can see the individual devices in that space Here's an occupancy sensor in that space. And when we select it, we can see its information including the normal hour and after hour time delay setting. By clicking on this drop down menu, we can change the time delay of that sensor. We can change it from 15 minutes to 10 minute time delay for normal hours. What I'd like to make sure everybody realizes is that I'm here in my office in California recording this presentation and my computer is logged into the actual segment manager running our building down in Birmingham, Alabama. So somewhere down in that office, that tiny LCD screen on that specific occupancy sensor in the lobby area of the building just updated from 15 minutes to 10 minutes because of the setting I entered here in California. I think that's pretty cool. Now we're also trying to make it easier to bring all the device descriptions and names into the segment manager. There's no reason to retype information that's already been entered into another program, right? We make freely available on our website a software package for DLM called LMCS. Our project management team uses this software extensively when preparing project documentation. They use it to create a bill of material for every room, and while entering many of the devices into the program, they'll also add descriptions and room numbers to the individual device fields. Our startup techs use LMCS on the site file to help program the devices on the site. To do that, they first synchronize that file with the individual rooms, so now each device in LMCS also has the actual device's serial numbers. Then they download all the settings. This is important for the next feature. 
What we've done in the segment is enable it to use the same LMCS file with all those descriptions. By choosing the LMCS100 import option, we can bring that synchronized file in and automatically any descriptions and room names and numbers entered for the DLM items will be applied to the same items inside the segment manager. As I said before, this is possible since both the segment manager and LMCS keep track of every DLM device by its serial number. Ideally, if we've done the programming and have an LMCS file for the site, the tech or the facility manager shouldn't have to type in any of this information themselves. We're also excited because in the upcoming release of LMCS, we're adding a new tagging functionality, similar to what's used in Twitter. So rooms that have the same tag applied, like open office or conference room, will be automatically combined into custom groups on the dashboard side of the segment. I'll show you what I mean by that shortly. There are also a couple of other options that are new in the config list. One item here lets us set up energy targets for lighting and plug load tiles. So what we'll see on the dashboard side is that the room tiles will use these color codes, making it super easy for folks to be able to identify rooms that aren't as energy efficient at a glance. This is where you'd be able to set exactly what you want those power colors to represent. Next, we've got the BACnet export tab. This export table lists all the BACnet parameters that we've chosen to make available to any integrator on the job. To create or add to the list, somebody would start by going in and clicking the toggle export configuration. When I do this, you'll notice there's a quick message up here saying it's been toggled on and I'm now able to add new objects to the list. I can now go to any device on the device tree. Let's choose that same occupancy sensor. What I want to do is set up the system to share information from just this occupancy sensor, just its detection state as a BACnet point. Once we've done this, we can go back to the export table and see we've got a listing of all the BACnet objects that the integrator who's communicating to the segment manager on the job will get when they pull data from the segment manager. One reason this is so helpful is because the export table sets up a firewall between the integrator and the DLM system. When the integrator asks for info from the segment manager, it doesn't have to send a command down the network wire to the individual device. We know to keep that information right at the ready here in the export table. That also helps us avoid situations where an integrator might be polling for data too quickly. Without the export table, we could be overwhelmed trying to send and receive data for all the requests that an integrator is making. The integrator benefits from this as well because there's very little latency from when they ask for information to when they get a response. The export table is a feature that's a huge benefit to everybody dealing with integration. When we click on the Reports tab, we get a page that allows us to run a couple of simple reports, including the network health, the export table, and a detailed room report. There are two more tabs. Segment managers don't usually have a lot of memory to store much history information. If this segment manager is part of a larger installation with other segment managers, it might be communicating up to a supervisor. A supervisor is basically the segment manager software, but running on a full server with tons of hard drive space. The supervisor can pull and store the history of every room and other parameters for long periods of time from multiple segment managers, possibly from one or more buildings or sites. The connection tab gives us an easy way to see which supervisor, if any, it's communicating with. The sync and group buttons make it easy to update the info in the supervisor if anything has changed here in this segment manager. Lastly, the Jobs tab gives us a way to see what tasks the segment has run and if any are still running. So with that, the tour of the configuration side of the segment manager is done. Let's take a look at the dashboard side, which is really where the most exciting changes in the segment manager have happened.